meeting of September 12th, 2019. The first item are the hearing minutes at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on August 29th, 2019. Any questions or comments on the hearing minutes? All right. I'll entertain a motion on the hearing minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes. PIC hearing, August 28th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. I approve myself from that. That was absent. Perfect. Thank you. Um, moving on to public hearing, our first item is on a joint petition by Steward Acquisition 12 LLC and Steward Acquisition 22 LLC for the discontinuance of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within two pedestrian easements adjacent to the following public ways in Boston proper. Shaman Street on its northerly side at the rear of 212-22 uh, Stewart Street, generally between Church Street and Coconut Grove Lane, and Church Street on its easterly side, generally between Stewart Street and Shaman Street. This was new business on August 29th, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Easement, Church Street, Shaman Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated August 12th, 2019. Um, good morning. Um, my name is Paula Devereaux. I'm an attorney at Pierce Elwood, and I'm here on behalf of Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC. And with me is John Schmidt from Niche Engineering. Um, we were before this board um, two weeks ago on a series of matters, um, specific repairs, discontinuances for a project to be built at the 212-222 um, Stewart Street. Um, which is shown on the plan. Um, we also are here this week in order to do some title cleanup for pedestrian easements that were as a result, that were granted to the city as a result of a development in 2008, which was never constructed. So in order to construct the project that was explained to you two weeks ago, um, we're here now to discontinue these um, pedestrian easements. Thanks, Paul. Tell us more. I definitely want no. All right. Questions or comments on the cleanup of these old pedestrian easements? Name your Todd. Okay. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve the joint petition by Stewart Acquisition 12 LLC and Stewart Acquisition 22 LLC. This continues any and all rights to travel the public may have had within the two pedestrian easements adjacent to the following public ways and plus proper is read into the record by the chair and is shown in the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuous Plan, Easement, Church Street, Shawmut Street, Boston Proper, one sheet dated August 12th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to our second item on a petition by 10 Tabor Street, LLC, for the acceptance of two pedestrian easements adjacent to Tabor Street, a public way in Roxbury, located on its northerly side at address number 10 east of Warren Street. This was new business on August 29th, 2019, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, one sheet, dated August 6th, 2019. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Phil Horesco, architect, landscape architect for the project. Uh, with me is Jacob Murray, uh, who is the civil engineer in the project. And uh, Adam Schechter, who's the attorney for the project, here to my right. Since we have, I think, three uh, items all related to this project, do you mind giving a quick project overview before getting to the specific actions? So, last meeting, uh, we suggested that I not show sure it was about. And uh, I have the red reference. Uh, yes, I did it. And I brought him with uh, This is a floor plan to start with. Tabor Street, more and here, uh, and narrow part here we're directly across from the Bruce uh, uh, Bowling Building, known as the Ferdinand Building, like the Powell Building, it's three buildings in one. So, so uh, it is uh, a six story building with 45 apartments that will be sold uh, that are on the upper five floors. There's a retail space and a parking garage on the first level. 
so what we have is um, a typical floor plan. lays out like this along capers. These little uh, sawtooth tiny elements, we call them orioles. Uh, Oriole is a bay that doesn't go all the way to the ground. So they are here. This is the part that would be over the street. Uh, there is our back side of uh, on our second floor. We have terraces and terraces on other parts of the building. And this is a picture that we've drawn of uh, this is the McCowan building. I mean, the uh, W Street Cafe happens to be in here. Our new building is this building on Cater Street. And that is Warren's there. And this is another. This is another view, again, from the Bowling building. And this is our new building. It's a narrow facade on Warren. And uh, this is more of building. So these Orioles finish off along Tabor Street. It's a masonry building and this is a metal kind of piece and it's, it's angled. So it sticks out maybe three feet and it's about a little over 13 feet above the sidewalk level. So that's what we're up to. That's our defense. Thanks. This is Jacob from Thanks. Can I ask a quick question just about the, uh, the north facing windows on the, the board which is now covered up? Exactly. Uh, on the sorry, the north facing window. Exactly. Are those actually going to be? Uh, it's a recess. We're trying to just do some a little bit of texture, uh, some kind of way of uh, not having just a complete blank facade. Okay. So, you know, we're going through uh, the BPDA design review, and uh, you know, there's a discussion about how we might pull that off and make it a uh, more interesting facade. Perfect. Thank you. You want to ask for yes, renderings? That's perfect, right. exactly. <laughs> Thank Good you. job. Exactly. <laughs> I did them all. Especially the landscape market. I'll walk you through basically the, the three items, which are the vertical discontinuance, the pedestrian easement, and then the specific repairs. Perfect. Just the pet easement. Yeah, do you, we're on the pet easement action. Do you mind starting with the pet easements? You want to start with that? Sounds better. Great. So the building along Tabor Street is slightly recessed from the build from the sidewalk and the property line. And therefore two areas will just basically be concrete and will blend into the city sidewalk and therefore pedestrian easements are needed from the property line to the edge of the building. And so there's two areas, one and two. They are 87 and 97 square feet uh, uh, respectively. And they come out, they come in at the most about four feet here with stuff being most times somewhere between two to three feet in the general area. That's the pedestrian easements. Questions or comments about the pedestrian easements? Name your time. Okay. Members of the public. All right. Before you move on, I'll entertain a motion on the pedestrian easements. We make a motion on a petition by 10 Tabor Street LLC for the acceptance of two pedestrian easements adjacent to Tabor Street, Public Way, Roxbury as shown on the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, one sheet dated August 6, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by 10 Tabor Street LLC and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of Tabor Street, a public way in Roxbury, located on its northeast side at address number 10, east of Warren Street, vertically above the grade of the sidewalk. This was new business on August 29th, 2019. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance Plan, vertical 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, one sheet date, August 22nd, 2019. So I still mentioned there are orioles that come off the building and extend over the city sidewalk. They are about 13 feet from the sidewalk grade, and there are three of them. They uh, come out about, at maximum, about three feet, and they are come to respectively approximately uh, 1,400 cubic feet, 3,000 cubic feet, and 3,500 cubic feet. And that's between the, the area covered and then the vertical discontinuance going up to the top of the building. So they're all along Tabor Street as well. 
And at no point, the sidewalk width is eight to nine feet that entire length, so at no point is it more than roughly 40%, 30% of the? Yes. Yeah. Questions or comments on the vertical disconnects? Name your talk. Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on the side. I make a motion on a joint petition by 10 Tabor Street LLC in a Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of Tabor Street, a public way, in Roxbury, located on its northerly side at address number 10, east of Warren Street, vertically above the grade of the sidewalk as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston, Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Vertical, 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, one sheet dated August 22, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a petition by 10 Tabor Street, LLC, uh, for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of curb, roadway, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction as well as new and relocated, especially pavement, street trees, street lights, and driveway curb cuts. Locations were Tabor Street on its northerly side, generally at address number 10 between Warren Street and Harrison Avenue. Warren Street on its easterly side, north of Tabor Street. This was new business uh, on August 29th, 2019. And this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs, 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, two sheets, dated August 2nd, 2019. So this is for the replacement of the sidewalks predominantly along Tabor Street, along the length of the, of the property, the building along Tabor Street, which is currently a broken bituminous concrete, and along Warren Street, which is a uneven brick pavement at the time. So we'll be replacing that with concrete, uh, with a moving of the curb cut, that's an existing curb cut opening on Tabor Street, to the proposed driveway entrance area. Uh, we'll also be adding Acorn, City of Boston standard acorn type lights, uh, and uh, street trees as well, surrounded by permeable pavers uh, in those areas. Uh, based on the feedback from last meeting, we're also redoing the crosswalk, redoing the sidewalk on both sides, Thank you. so that this is an existing um, accessible ramp that will basically be redone, maybe tweaked a little bit more towards this area as possible, and then this uh, crosswalk, will be, this ramp will be made accessible, which currently is not. Thank you. Um, and other than that, we also had a note regarding redundant C's for the light poles uh, for telecom and future telecom connections. Thank you for uh, both those, those changes. And just to confirm, the, the design you're putting in place is consistent with the design that BTD and Public Works are doing for the rest of Warren Street? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. And we've lined up the construction phasing so that we will line up the construction phasing. So, a construction manager plan, I believe, I had a, I had a meeting yesterday with uh, Howard Stein Hudson, and apparently you've given them the green light to go ahead on the CMP, so I'm waiting for that plan to come back. So, I appreciate the uh, due diligence on that. Um, just on the final reconstruction, if you could get to Howard Stein Hudson, the existing signage that needs to be reinstalled, construction, if any new or proposed signage should be included on that uh, plan. We will do, we will follow through on that. What's your contract? Um, the um, the uh, developer is Self Builder. Um, it's GES Development and uh, the gentleman is Klaus Kimmel who runs that. And he's exploring other options perhaps, but uh, right now he's the builder. That's who I'm working with. Oh, is there bike parking within the within the garage for residents? Is there bike parking? Bike parking? Yes. Um, it, well, there's a bike room. There's a bike okay. room. Okay. Separate from the garage. Okay. Uh, it's th off the lobby. Yeah. If uh, you could possibly have a conversation with John Monticelli um, from the Boston Transportation Department about whether it makes sense to install any curbside uh, bike parking just to support the retail establishment on the on the first floor, that'd be great. Uh, see whether it makes sense on, on Tabor Street. John, thank you for being here enough for the side of you all. He's good at volunteering. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Right, your talk. Okay. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Make a motion to approve on a petition by 10 Tabor Street LLC for the making of specific repairs 
on Tabor Street and Warren Street, as shown in the set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repairs, 10 Tabor Street, Warren Street, Roxbury, two sheets dated August 2nd, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. you. Moving on to our next item, on a petition by our IREP, Newbury Hotel, LLC, for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Newbury Street, a public way on Boston proper, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Arlington Street. This was new business on August 29, 2019, and this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, Newbury Street, 15 Arlington Street, Boston, one she did August 2019. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Ditch Engineering. And with me is Michael Lempierre from Jones Lang LaSalle. We were here two weeks ago uh, for new business to propose uh, improvements to the public sidewalks on Newberry Street and Arlington Street. The, uh, the first uh, petition before you is a pedestrian easement. And the pedestrian easement will run on Newberry Street from the corner of Arlington Street uh, south about 300. Uh, about feet. And it, uh, the purpose of the pedestrian easement is to allow unimpeded, uh, safe, and accessible access to the, for the full concrete sidewalk width. We had originally just provided enough to provide a six foot uh, easement, um, six, foot e six foot of concrete, but now it's the full concrete width of eight, uh, nine feet. Um, so between uh, the, the curb and the, the back of sidewalk will be open to the public. And if you take up the tree pit from that, how much, what's the resulting concrete uh, sort of back of sidewalk? Sure. Okay, so we got this piece of prepared plan. Uh, so behind this, uh, we have a, this, the cross section is we have a tree planting zone, the previous pavers uh, that fall within the paper zone, and then the concrete sidewalk starts there, and it's actually 8.9 feet from the back of the tree pit to the, to the back. Other things on the pedestrian easement? Um, on this, I just need some clarification. I'm obviously you're the construction management manager. Um, we're not the construction manager; we're the, we're the owner's project manager. But right. consequently, it's the CM. Yeah. Now you have other C uh, CMs that are coming in on this. Columbia is in place uh, doing the room renovation okay. inside okay. the building. Do you have another one? No. The Commodore is not involved in this. This is Columbia and Consigli. That's correct. Yep. Because right. I have a meeting with Columbia probably tomorrow discuss what they need for their construction staging. So obviously I'm hoping that you've coordinated that between the two GCs. Those two groups are coordinating with each other. Yeah. Yep. Other questions or comments on the pet easement? Any Todd? Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on the pedestrian easement. I make a I make a motion on a petition by IREP Newberry Hotel LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Newberry Street and Public Way, Boston Proper, located on its northwesterly side, southwest of Arlington Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, pedestrian easement plan, Newberry Street, 15 Arlington Street, Boston, one sheet, dated August 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item. On a petition by IREP Newbury Hotel LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, and storm drain infrastructure. Locations are Arlington Street on its southwesterly side at address number 15 between Newbury Street and Public Alley number 437, and Newbury Street on its northwesterly side southwest of Arlington Street. This was new business on August 29th, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Newbury Street, 15 Arlington Street, Public Way, Boston, four sheets at June 2019. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. So on Newbury Street, from the intersection of Arlington Street to the edge of the property, we will be reconstructing those sidewalks. We provide a uh, three-foot pervious paver strip in tree with uh, four trees within that pervious paver a nine foot wide concrete sidewalk, um, new street lighting, and then we are also installing perpendicular ramps through the curb line 
uh, existing out there are apex ramps, so we're reconstructing the ramp here to be perpendicular, and then on the opposite side of the very street, a perpendicular ramp here as well, which is in line with the path of the pedestrian flow. On, uh, on our own, we will be reconstructing the sidewalk as well. We have a series of um, various papers along, along our street, and then the street line. Uh, we have provided a crosswalk here for a uh, perpendicular path to travel across Arlington Street. And then, as requested or, or suggested at the new business hearing, Public Alley 437 entrance will be reconstructed via flush sidewalk condition for a safe and accessible pedestrian act. Uh, I know that uh, the, our attorney for the project is working with Chung on the LMI, and I know that you've been involved with the CMP. Uh, are there any questions? For the traffic signals at Arlington and Newbury, we can check the grades and locations, there's no conflicts. I don't believe there are, but we'll confirm that. If Please confirm that. Yep. Thank you for looking at uh, LA 437. Sure. Other questions or comments on this political prep plan? Name your top. Okay. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on the Senate. Make a motion to approve the petition by IREP, Newbury Hotel, LLC, for making specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp, reconstruction as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, and storm drain infrastructure. As written for the record by the chair, we've shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repairs plan, Newbury Street, 15 Arlington Street, public, public way, Boston, four sheets dated June 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next item on a petition by LLOB Associates LLC doing business as Five Horses Tavern, South End, for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating with Columbus Ave, uh, Public Way, and Boston Proper, located on its northwesterly side in address numbers 533 535 northwest of Claremont Park, and consisting of seating for 44 persons total and approximately 178 square feet within the public way. This was new business on August 29th, and this is shown on a plan entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Sidewalk Cafe, Five Horses Restaurant, 535 Columbus Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated May 31st, 2019. Good morning, how are you today? Um, I'm Scott Whitland. I'm the attorney for Five Horses Tavern. Next to me is Dylan Welsh. He's the owner and operator of the restaurant. We were here two weeks ago um, asking for a petition to extend what's currently a private um, patio into the public way for about four feet three inches to expand the, uh, to expand the patio. Um, I think the only change that was requested was to show planters on the side, which we've done. Added some planters, which were done, and that was the only change that was requested. Um, so, I'm uh, since the new business hearing and late yesterday, and I don't know if it has been presented to you. The, the Claremont Claremont Neighborhood Association recently just sent us a, a letter outlining some very specific concerns. This is similar to ones which I know that you've had some public process uh, okay. around, but there are some specifics that I don't think we've had a chance to digest about their feedback. Sure, um, which. And Amy and Tucker, if I'm wrong, but the, the number of seats, the resulting noise, and then the, the change to the uh, sort of the continuous path of travel along Columbus Avenue, which we have discussed during the new business hearing. Um, those are the principal Claremont Neighborhood Association issues. Is that right? Okay. Um, one thing that I would I'd like to request is, if it works for you, is just to be able to have a conversation. You've had a number of conversations with residents, and you've had a lot of engagement, uh, and there's been residents who have been supportive of this, and there's been residents who have expressed concerns about this. But for us to have a chance over the next two weeks to be able to work with you and the Claremont Neighborhood Association about their, the, about their specific concerns and how to address them here. So we, they, they, we had um, already a, a Neighborhood Association meeting with them. They didn't have any comments about it at that point in time. You know, since the, I met with them four times. Since the time we've got about almost 40 people saying they have support this who are neighbors in the area. Um, you know, we've already done a pedestrian study showing that there's really absolutely no impact. We submitted that to you guys. I mean, there's, there's always going to be some level of noise in a restaurant, but we're, we're not, 
you know, we're not expanding it more than you know, it's four feet out. It's we're not talking a significant bump. Yep. In addition, I just I, I've emailed. In addition to meeting with them four times, the actual president of the board and the board members. Uh, twice on site, um, I've emailed them probably eight times with no response. Not just concerned, no response. So I don't know much more I can be doing. And, and frankly, I think they should have came to us ahead of time with this. Right? I mean, they've had opportunities. They've had a neighborhood to associate me. I don't understand. So I, I appreciate that you guys have done extensive outreach. I know there's been a number of meetings about this. I know that you have done a lot of outreach. I think we got the letter. Yeah. Yesterday okay. afternoon. Yesterday yeah. afternoon, which I realize. Uh, you have been looking for this sort of clarity from the neighborhood organization perhaps for a month since April, since April, April at right? least. I totally understand that. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we have obviously from a, a lot of city departments that have reviewed this around the accessibility of the path of travel around the engineering pieces. Obviously yep. we've already given some feedback which you guys have uh, uh, made some adjustments to your plan on. I think it is worth it though just for if we can take the next two weeks if it works for you, just to be able to make sure we can work through any of their final concerns around, or just be able to have a conversation with the Claremont Neighborhood Association and be back here at the... I know. I, I We've already written a letter of support oh, for the same application. And yesterday they sent us a letter uh, saying that they are opposed to this application. I, and I know that you have a number of people who have written... No, I have a letter of support from CNA. I, I know, but they sent us yesterday a letter uh, saying that they do not support this. And, I, and you have a number of residents who have written to us in support of this, or have signed letters in support of this. We are not, I, I do not dispute the fact that there are folks who like what you are proposing. Obviously there's some residents that don't. We got the specific letter yesterday with some very specific concerns. And I think that my sense is from the, the letter, which if you do not have a copy of, obviously we will share with you. Uh, we, right we've now. not seen it, uh, obviously, at all. I mean, as I said, this is the first, actually, we're hearing of it entirely. So, well, a little at all. For yeah, us, I, little. I, I totally I appreciate that. And that is, uh, that's my fault that we were not able to get this letter to you uh, prior to this moment. Um, but they, they did get this to us fairly late, obviously, in the process. And you have been doing a lot of direct outreach to them. I, I know that. So well, my question, I guess, is what else? Could what else can I do? Because uh, I've really put a lot of effort and time into this. It's very important to the business yep. survival. So I, I guess my question is, what, what would you like me to do over the next two, two weeks? I think if, if there are three specific things which they outlined in the letter, if I'm not mistaken, around sort of the number seating about the continuity right. of the Columbus set. Pressure on South End parking. Yeah. It's just and fun. some of which we have already uh, sort of, some of which you've already responded to, some of which you've already made adjustments on, some of which I think are worth just an additional conversation, whether it's between the leadership of CNA or uh, our PI, the PIC staff and you. I mean, I, I, get, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I mean, my thinking here is with the noise. What, what yeah, is like this? What, what are we, it's not, right? I mean, okay. this is much less burdensome than the other patios that we showed you last time. There's not. It's. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I mean, how do you address a noise issue? Because they can. We've that's had so no subjective. violations of noise in seven years. Oh, that's so subjective years. on the noise thing. Um, parking's one thing, but we're not talking. You know, we're talking, I think, what, 15, 20 extra seats here. We're not talking significant. And then pedestrian access, we've already cleared. I mean, we know that there's absolutely no impact. We've obviously had that conversation already, and you've made some adjustments already on, on the side street. We just simply got this, this piece of neighborhood feedback. Okay. Uh, again, I know that you've been seeking it for a while. I know that there's time pressure on this. Um, and ideally, this letter would have come this would have come sooner, um, but it was potentially, I guess, a specific request from the neighborhood association, which is different than what the neighborhood association may previously have, have provided to you. So, are we to, to address them and then come back in, in two weeks? And I think, maybe, I think, unless Amy or Todd think otherwise, I think it's we can do that with our office of neighborhood services, with the resident association, uh, and with you to make sure that we are we understand what their concerns are and how your proposal actually addresses many of those concerns. I believe also, fair? too, a lot of the concerns that are being raised by the residents might be a subject of the licensing board hearing. And not the PIC action. Right. Which I, I think that that is where a majority of, their, uh, of these issues may ultimately be addressed. But I think it's useful for us just to be able to have that conversation with them and with you to walk through the process. And then come back in two weeks to in two see weeks. it again. So in other words, their concerns you're saying are really addressed at the licensing board after this is approved here. There are, there are components of it, though, I think, that have an impact on 
the amount of square footage within the right of way that uh, the study is already done though it is about the volume of space in the right of way that allows you to have to be able to expand the amount of seating in your restaurant which is well so it's not just the, i mean keep in mind that he's not just expanding he's also changing the furniture which will be smaller which will allow it to accommodate more people it's not the expansion to the public way isn't entirely related to the number of the 20 seats. seats. Like the we're not putting seats. 20 seats on that sliver. It's like, as, I mean, as you can see, the number of seats. In the, in the I just don't understand. I'm concerned because I've reached out, like I said. I met with them four times. I emailed eight times with no response. So what do I do if I reach out to them again about meeting about these concerns, addressing the letter, and they don't respond to I me? Think that, that, that is where we come in. That exactly. Through our mayor's office and neighborhood services so that you are not doing the Correct. outreach. We understand okay. you've done a lot of outreach. There's, a, there's an element where we can play a role in making okay. sure that we are forming that connection. We may have a, uh, I don't know if there's a member of the public who also wants to. Just want to share, I'm the attorney for the owner of the premises. Yep. And I just want to share as you're considering this that they've been a really good tenant since 2012. Yep. And they've never been fined or cited for any violations of any kind. No disputes or litigation. So I just want to speak in favor of them and the, and the petition, presumably if they were problems we would have heard there haven't been any so right and and i uh, again this is not about sort of uh, i understand i just want to share that perspective that, yep. that they've never uh, been very upstanding so yep i appreciate what was your name sir robert finkel attorney for the owner thank you we have at least i think two other members of the public who want to offer comment Go ahead. Butter. I do live in the neighborhood and uh, I've been frequenting establishment here and there over the last few years. Um, I have to concur, uh, I believe it's well run. Um, if we were talking about a new, uh, new business coming in with a lot of big plans, uh, untested, unproven, I can understand that being a concern. I've never heard anything uh, raucous, well run. Uh, I think that's important to consider because you know outdoor spaces in neighborhoods provide, I think, vitality. Again, no issues, you know, to date. So I believe I would be in favor for it. All right, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Dan Kladner. Um, I'm one of the owners of 533 Columbus. I'm also here representing the board. My wife is on the board of the condo. Mm -hmm. The condo board unanimously voted against this. Um, did not want the extra noise. It's mostly a noise complaint. We have no complaints directly with the restaurant or very few. Um, noise is always an issue for our neighborhood. Um, and the people who live above it and our butters who live next door at 529 have all asked us to come here and speak. A lot of them couldn't come today because of the timing. Um, mostly concerned about the noise. There's a lot of young families, especially in 529. And uh, they feel that, especially considering that the patio is open until midnight and it is a tavern. And per your authorizing statute for this uh, sidewalk type expansion, it's supposed to serve food. And my guess is that your food service towards the end, end of the night mm -hmm. drastically drops down. And what we're concerned with is Friday and Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, having a very loud and boisterous crowd out on the sidewalk. With the, this, we stop yeah. seeing the patio at 11 o'clock. Yeah. We do not stay open at midnight, and we follow the Boston regulations of serving food to all our guests. Right. I'm sure it's available, but it's served. So. served. And, and again, I think, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are things that are the purview of this group versus the licensing board, which ours is about the use of the public right of way, not about hours of operations or the components. Is that I'll, fair? I'll also note just one thing. I think the community, um, or, or, uh, the Claymont Community Board, did not know about our building voting against it um, until recently. And my understanding from them is that they were told that, there were, that the building was in support of it. And we voted, and we're definitely not, in terms of the residential, the, the condo board itself. So I just want to make clear that that has not ever been the case. OK. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Also, it, the, the, the building board is very difficult to get in touch with because uh, only two, I believe only two of the units in the building are owner-occupied. The rest are rentals. rentals. So. Good morning. Uh, my name is Victor Laringero. I have been a South End resident for about six and a half years now. I'm a direct abutter to them for the last three and a half. Uh, I have never once experienced any type of toxic um, behavior or uh, loud noises or anything like that. It kind of like how we uh, described the patio closes at 11. Uh, I hardly see people out there past 10:30, honestly. 
Um, and like I said, as a direct butter as well, I, I rarely hear even the inside or the outside of the restaurant. Um, so to hear all these concerns about noise is quite frankly somewhat strange to me. I mean, literally live right behind them. Uh, so uh, I'm actually 100% uh, in support of them expanding their patio. And I also believe that, um, I also believe that, uh, you know, giving them this permission would be uh, attributing to the thriving vibrance of the South End as well. Thank you so much for that. So can I ask a question? Just, I mean, clearly the complaint is going to focus on noise here. How do you suggest we address this, given there's going to be a complete mixed bag of people on this? Right? You know we're going to come back, and half are going to say yes, and I think half are going to say I'm no. I'm glad that you're going to facilitate this, because I'm kind of at my Correct. Yeah, so I, that, that's, that's good. I, I think that there's a role that we can play in ensuring that all parties are committed, because I really appreciate the amount of outreach which, which you have done, which you have done, uh, and there's been a lot of neighborhood conversation. My understanding is there's been some conversation about this, but perhaps there's a coordinating role that we can play. To your point, there are things which this board, the PIC, focuses on, which is different than what the yeah. license board or others mm -hmm. focus on. Um, but we are sort of the, the first action in the or oh, action okay. in this it's process, and I think that there's so there's some, some conversations. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand the balance of some of my question. Was no, fair. no, thank you. Okay. So, so please go ahead, sir. Uh, Chris Roach, my office is at Mass Ave Columbus. Um, I believe Five Horses has been. Uh, a member of uh, the neighborhood for six years, and they've been a great neighbor. And uh, I don't see it as a, a, a big ask. I think it's a neighborhood. You know, we should give these guys the benefit of the doubt. And just quickly, I used to be a board member of CNA, but we get emails on everything. And this has been like stealth, nothing, no communication. And, and again, there should be a public uh, dialogue, but. I mean, CNA has kept none of its members sort of abreast of what's going on. And uh, I went to the meeting at the Five Horse. Um, I know there was a meeting here a couple weeks ago, and then, you know, uh, there's people here mostly in support. Obviously, not everyone, but uh, it would have been nice if CNA kind of kept its constituents in, uh, sort of in, in, in the loop that there were still concerns to, to deal with. I appreciate that. If, so uh, if it works, I think that if there's a two-week continuance, we will work with the Office of Neighborhood Services, have a conversation just to make sure we're walking through with you, with CNA, the concerns, and again, the concerns that are applicable to this board, uh, and, and then be back here with uh, two weeks from now. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, I'll, I'll, what's the, our next? Uh, yes. I'm sorry, when? 26th. The 26th. All right. I'll entertain a motion to continue to the 26th. I'll make a motion to continue to the 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right, moving on to our next item on a joint petition by the Rosendale Village Main Streets and the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within Birch Street, a public way in West Roxbury, located between Belgrade Avenue and Corinth Street, and consisting of a new tactical plaza, including new planters, landscaping, bike racks, public seating, overhead lighting, pavement markings, and traffic control devices. This was new business on August 29, 2019, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Birch Street, Rosendale, eight, eight sheets dated September 10, 2019. Hello. Good morning. Uh, Jacob Wessel with the Transportation and Public Works Department. Uh, I'm Nina Chase. I'm the landscape architect for the project from Merritt Chase. Um, and we're, we were here before you two weeks ago with a set of plans uh, now revised for Birch Street uh, in Rosendale according to the City of Boston's Tactical Public Realm Guidelines uh, to transform the street into a pedestrian way. Uh, the street will remain a public street, um, and we will have uh, trees, planters, um, movable seating, uh, and additional lighting added to the street. Um, we've made some revisions to the plans, added more uh, details that Nina can speak to on how the lighting is secured to the buildings, um, changed some of the, uh, or indicated how the seating abides by the Disabilities Commission's comments. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, there's the revisions, um, and uh, have been uh, coordinating uh, with the abutters uh, as to all of these types of plans. 
uh, including how the lighting will be affixed to their uh, to their buildings, uh, which we will uh, secure building permits for from the building department. Can you offer the uh, specific changes? Sure. So on the plans we've added um, on the there's a sure which page it is, but there's a, apologies, but there's a lighting sheet that also includes um, new connection details for how the lighting, the string lighting will be attached to the building. Um, so we've added those details. Uh, so we've changed out the tables and chairs um, per some uh, ADA concerns so that they meet ADA. Um, and the, the detailing of the lighting connections to the, the yes. building faces, that works with our fire department, is that? So we've been communicating with the Bureau of Field Services, uh, the deputy chief there, and he has seen all these plans and uh, is conditionally supportive. What was that? He's, he's conditionally supportive of the plan uh, and uh, thinks it's an improvement under the, uh, from the current state of, of the street. attachment so yes. it, it actually would like the so one piece would say affixed to the wall and essentially yes. it would and then there's a buckle yeah. that connects so that you at, can at the turn buckle. It. Yep. other questions or comments on this? who maintains the lighting the the lighting will be maintained by the uh, through a maintenance agreement with the Rosendale Village main streets in the city of Boston one thing we should do with that if uh, you just get let John Yetman and Mike Donaghy know. So if we get requests for street lighting, uh, to make sure that they get back okay. to uh, the right folks. Great. Right. Amy O'Tuff? Okay. Members of the public? All right. I want to get a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve on a joint petition by Rosendale Village Main Streets and the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within Broad Street. As shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, Bird Street, Rosendale, H Sheet, dated September 10, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by, sorry, on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and driveway, curb cut reconstruction as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lights, speed humps, raised crosswalks, storm drain infrastructure, and median islands. Locations are Marcella Street, generally between Center Street and Thornton Street, Highland Street, generally between John Elliott Square and Beach Glen Street, Cedar Street, generally between Center Street and Thornton Street, Center Street, generally at Highland Street, Linwood Street, and Highland Ave, Highland Avenue, generally between Center Street and Alva Kittredge Park, Linwood Street at Center Street, Millmont Street, generally between Highland Street and Lambert Avenue, Guild Street, generally between Lambert Avenue and Thornton Street, Lambert Avenue, generally between Cedar Street and Millmont Street slash Guild Street, uh, Thornton Street, generally between Cedar Street and Vale Street, Valentine Street, generally between Washington Street and Fulda Street. This was new business on August 29, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets Program, Highland Park Zone, Roxbury, 15 sheets dated September 12, 2019. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Monticelli, representing the Boston Transportation Department. My name is Radu Nan, um, Kittleson Associates. Uh, as you stated, we were here two weeks ago presenting a zone for uh, our current neighborhood slow streets program. Um, uh, Highland Park is in the Roxbury neighborhood. Uh, the neighborhood slow streets program uh, selects neighborhoods based on an assortment of criteria identifying uh, issues and concerns related to speeding and visibility and pedestrian safety throughout the neighborhood. Uh, tries to identify working with community engagement, uh, iterative meetings, walks, and conversations with residents and uh, community groups to identify critical locations uh, where we can make changes to the public realm, uh, ge geometric changes, as well as introducing um, an assortment or a network of speed humps, vertical uh, deflection elements in order to slow down the neighborhood to a general speed of 20 miles an hour. As presented two weeks ago, we're proposing to install 29 uh, speed humps throughout the neighborhood. Um, the installation of these speed humps um, is designed to maintain an even travel profile, speed profile of 20 miles an hour. Separation of the speed humps is approximately 200 to 250 feet. Uh, the location of the speed humps was field verified 
to avoid any impacts to existing manholes, casings, um, well, of the public um, Boston Water, excuse me, <coughs> Boston Water and Sewer and other utilities. Um, if there's any, no changes have been made to those plans since the last meeting. Um, uh, can you just walk us through not the 29 speed dumps, but sort of the steps of the, the more intersection redesign components? Yes. Okay. The, the first intersection with some stiff changes is at Marcella Street and Highland Street. Um, this location is adjacent to Marcella Playground. Um, there's a lot of uh, crossings at this location. It's um, marked today as a crosswalk. Um, the Marcella Street um, transitions between a 26-foot cross-section to a 30-foot cross-section. We're proposing to expand the sidewalk um, and the, uh, the southeast corner by six feet and provide directional ramps, uh, which will shorten the crossing distance across Marcella, uh, this location. Changes from the plans presented two weeks ago include uh, the replacement of a grassy area in the, the north portion of the intersection with permeable pavers. No other changes have been made besides cleaning, cleaning up the um, information regarding the public right away. Right, uh, concerns are Correct. Correct. Yes. Uh, can you take us down, down the street to Highland Center? Um, sure. Oh, yeah. uh, so, <clears throat> um, at Highland Center, um, we are adjacent to a MBTA bus stop um, and the Page Academy. Um, we have documented crossings at, at this location, um, and uh, this, this particular um, intersection does not feature a uh, crosswalk across um, uh, Center Street. Um, there are, there's no marked crosswalk for about a quarter mile. Due to the pedestrian activity at this location, we're proposing to install a traffic median um, that features a pedestrian refuge island. The traffic median is going to be six feet wide, um, and includes also the, the reconstruction of the existing ramps, their director, um, directional ramps. Since the um, first presentation two weeks ago, we have worked with the public works um, engineers to essentially smooth out the transition along um, Highland Avenue um, to make that a, a, an easier transition for sweepers and, and, um, and plows. Um, Adjust the radius of the Highland upgrade. Correct, yes. It's curvilinear before it was just a straight, straight edge to taper. Can you talk us through the Linwood change? Uh, the next one. Sure. So the Linwood intersection uh, is a fairly wide intersection today, approximately 56 feet wide. Um, it creates a lot of confusion for for drivers um, trying to stop and and. Um, enter traffic on Center Street. Um, the crosswalk is even uh, longer, 65 feet long. We're proposing to expand the north, north edge of Center Street, um, maintain the existing 36-foot cross-section on Center Street, um, and, and shorten the, the crosswalk distance by roughly half, uh, down to 31 feet. The traffic separator at this location is going to be four feet wide. It's going to feature uh, scored concrete on top to discourage people from stopping on it. Um, and this, the traffic median on uh, Center Street is meant to, to provide features along Center Street um, that are consistent with a speed limit, city, citywide speed limit of 25 miles an hour. Do you know the places where we've used raised and scored medians as opposed to raised and cobbled or? Just raised and flush. So yeah, I mean, like if you walk to um, North Station, you'll get a. Oh right, right, right. Of course, yeah. right. by hit that market. Fun. Yeah. You want to uh, walk us through the next one, the Highland Marcel? Um, sure. We. The Highland Marcel. They um, the second or the last uh, traffic separator. Um, is on Center Street and, and uh, Highland Street. Um, this traffic separator is really intended to discourage people from crossing the double yellow center line. Um, it includes a, a, a short um, straight taper on the southbound approach that is on a steep grade. 
the intent of that straight section is to introduce the drivers to the Rays Island, uh, bring awareness to this new physical element in the middle of the road, um, and then direct them around the, uh, this corner. We're proposing to include an R3 keep right sign um, as well as um, object markers on the same post to uh, add additional cues to drivers that uh, there is a race device in the middle of the roadway. Other questions or comments? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment um, on sheet six. Um, our recent record shows, so this is Santa Street at Highland Ave. Um, our existing water main, the 16 inch duct line, cement line, 1983 is actually on the north side we have the uh, specific repairs it's actually closer to the curb um, but um, we just you know just be aware that it's there and what I'll do is I'll just send you plans to so see you, you know okay. where it is perfect so. we'll, we'll update the base there so that way yeah. at least in the construction phases they are cognizant of that all right great thank you okay, thanks thank you other questions or comments name your top yeah. members of the public all right I want to motion on the side I make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and driveway curb cut reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lights, speed bumps, speed humps, raised crosswalks, storm drain infrastructure, and median islands. Uh, this is more specifically uh, located uh, location is read in the record by the chair. Uh, also as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets Program, Highland Park Zone Roxbury, 15 sheets dated September 12, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Moving on to new business, our first item is 3193 Washington Street, Montebello Road, West Roxbury, pedestrian easements on a petition by 3193 Washington Development, LLC. To our next item of new business, 132 and 201 Brookline Avenue, Fullerton Street, Kilmarnock Street, Boston Proper, discontinuances, widening and relocations, pedestrian easement, specific repairs on a set of joint petitions by Fenway Enterprises, 132 Brookline Avenue, LLC, and the Landmark Center Owner Limited Partnership. My name's Abe Benson. I'm with Samuels and Associates here with the project team. Um, just to uh, orient you, this is actually a project that's been uh, to kick before. Uh, we're talking about uh, the uh, Landmark Center, uh, now known as 401 Park Drive. Uh, this is a multi-phase uh, master plan. Uh, we have, uh, we're here uh, about a year ago, maybe, maybe a little bit more for the first phase of the improvements, which include the park that we built in front of the building, um, uh, fronting uh, the Muddy River, uh, and some of the work along Brookline Avenue. This is Brookline Avenue Park Drive. Um, and the next phase, this is a little bit hard to read, but the next phase involves uh, an expansion above the non-historic piece of the building, the existing uh, garage. So. Um, this is a uh, site plan. This is uh, the Muddy River, uh, Park Drive, Brookline Ave, Fenway Train Station. Uh, so the first phase of the project uh, was uh, to create an entirely new front of the building, green the front of the building. We converted a Best Buy uh, parking lot to a one-acre park, uh, created a new food hall in the building, really 
moved away from tenants that were more large format retail to fine grain, uh, who created permeability through through the building, from the train station to the neighborhood. So phase one included landscaping all the way from the train station, uh, the park, uh, to, uh, and along Brookline Avenue up to about the area of the Regal Cinema Entry. Uh, the next phase uh, of, the, of the project is, uh, which was approved by the uh, uh, originally in 2014 and then uh, through a notice of project change a couple of years ago. Uh, the next phase is to uh, remove the existing non-historic building on the corner, which is sort of a blank box. Uh, Show you a picture of that. Um, uh, that houses used to house the Blick Art Store. We moved that down the street, uh, and uh, we'll demolish that structure and then build uh, a 14-story office and lab building over the existing garage. So. By doing that, we're, we're actually setting the building back, creating another landscape plaza in front of the building, um, rebuilding the intersection of Kilmarnock, Fullerton, Brookline Avenue, uh, redoing uh, Fullerton Street um, as well. Uh, so this is just a reminder, this is an image of the park uh, in front of the building, the food hall uh, on the corner uh, where Best Buy used to be and Brookline Avenue landscaping has all been uh, implemented the park. Uh, this is the building, the non-historic building to be demolished at the corner of uh, Brookline Avenue and Fullerton Street. Uh, so pretty blank uh, facades. Actually, the sidewalk is underneath an existing arcade. It's really uh, kind of problematic zone with uh, drainage problems and uh, no cycle accommodations or pedestrian accommodations. And then this is a rendering uh, of the new building uh, showing the existing to remain. This is the setback in the new plaza area along the front of the building. Uh, so that will turn it over to Will from VHP. Streetscape improvements that includes castle place concrete sidewalks, street lighting infrastructure, uh, street trees, and, and uh, the furnishing zone that includes permanent pavement, uh, as well as a curb line in Fulton Street, portions of Kilmarnock Street, and Brookline Avenue. <coughs> now, under the existing additions, Abe brought this up earlier, uh, the existing building, uh, which is essentially the old Blick Arts building, uh, is situated right at the corner of Fulton and Brookline Ave. And what the project is proposing to do is essentially shift the facade along Florida Street inward toward the site and away from the roadway. And that allows for the creation of new Castle Place concrete sidewalks at Florida Street, as well as a furnishing zone that acts as a barrier between the pedestrian path and the vehicular travel means. Uh, also, in addition to that, as part of this proposal, we're proposing to widen Florida Street. So that curve to curve width would become a little bit wider and what that does is it creates an opportunity to, to install or, or construct a, a westbound bike lane as well as additional storage capacity on Fulton Street. Also making it a little easier for these larger trucks to make the turn onto Fulton Street or from Fulton Street to Brooklyn Ave. Uh, so that was another key component of this project. Uh, related to streetscape, if you look at the existing condition, there's a curb cut here about mid-block on Fulton Street that currently serves an ancillary parking area. It's uh, the at-grade at parking space. Uh, essentially, as part of this proposal, we would close that curb cut and reposition uh, this area. This would now become the new uh, primary access point for the garage and the loading space along along Fulton Street. So there are two additional curb cuts here, along with the floors. Uh, today, the existing garage access is toward the tail end of Fulton Street. Again, we would be sliding that primary access point to about mid-block of Fulton Street. <coughs> There is an existing pedestrian easement that is located basically under the building. Abe mentioned this earlier. 
uh, that pedestrian easement would be extinguished and essentially replaced with a new pedestrian easement along Fortune Street. And it's along this corridor here, along the back of sidewalk to Fortune Street. Uh, similarly, we would have uh, in Kilmar Street an existing pedestrian easement. It's about 12 square feet. It's a very small area. That would be replaced with the new widening of Kilmar Street. So in addition to widening Fullerton Street, we would potentially be widening Kilmar Street as well. Now, what that does accomplish for us is the ability to create uh, an eastbound bike lane along this end of Kilmar Street, as well as an additional standalone right turn only lane. So that adds additional capacity. And the intent is to uh, hopefully alleviate some of the congestion at that intersection, which has been well documented. Uh, so in addition, if you're looking at the site plan here, uh, new cast and place concrete sidewalk, which essentially matches the width of the Van Ness sidewalk, as well as a new furnishing zone with new street lighting, as well as street trees along that curb line. Uh, some of the ancillary improvements include upgrading pedestrian ramps at this intersection. So the entire intersection would get an upgrade. Uh, some of the apex style ramps would be going away. The, under the current design, the new ramps would be ADA compliant and they'd be angled toward the receiving ramps, which is something we, we coordinate closely with the Disability Commission. Uh, in addition, the, the intersection the signal equipment would receive an upgrade just to respond to the new geometry of that intersection as well. Um, so I think that touches on uh, generally the streets game. I did want to touch on uh, just the, the two discontinuances. Again, we had mentioned the existing pedestrian easement in Fulton Street. That would be extinguished and replaced with a new pedestrian easement. That's shown here in this plan. Again, it runs the full length of Fulton Street, uh, generally to the corner of Brooklyn Avenue. The secondary, the secondary pedestrian easement that I mentioned in Kilmarnock Street, again, about 12 square feet. It's located here at the corner of Van Ness and Kilmarnock. That would be extinguished and essentially replaced with a new widening area in Kilmarnock Street. That is approximately 1,200 square feet. Again, it goes to essentially the back of the sidewalk, and that's where you see your right turn only lane and your new furnishings that are created in this space. And with that, I think, so just wanted to touch on uh, our process over the past few months. We've had a, an opportunity to meet with a number of different city agencies. We met with the PIC staff. Uh, throughout that process, we received some really good feedback that was incorporated into the drawings. I'll give you an example. We met with BTD, and it's my understanding that uh, the city has a capital improvement project planned for the Brookline Avenue right away, and it may include new bike lane facilities and potentially a, a a northbound bus only lane along this corridor in Brooklyn Avenue. So if you take a look at the proposed streetscape design, what we're essentially doing here where you may notice the, the corner where Chipotle is, we're shifting the curb line inward toward Chipotle and toward the sidewalk and away from the roadway. And that creates an opportunity again for the city to come in and, and this doesn't preclude their plans to provide a new bus only lane and also their bike facilities are not hindered by that. Aside from BTD, uh, we did have a chance to meet with Boston Water and Sewer throughout our process. Uh, we do have an approved site plan, uh, which it, it just came in uh, uh, last month, so we're, we're happy to say that we have that in hand. And uh, in addition, we have letters of support from the BPA, the BP, uh, BTD, excuse me, the Disability Commission, Neighborhood Services, Verizon, National Grid, etc. So we're happy to move forward to the next step of the process. And again, thank you for letting us uh, propose or, or meet with you to talk about their, our new project. Uh, with that, I think we'll open up for questions. Thanks, Will. Um, these may have already come up in the BTD conversations. Obviously, further towards Beacon Street, there's the BTDs working on sort of that new, uh, a new path uh, sort of a, uh, adjacent to your property that essentially would connect with the Muddy River. I know that is probably outside the extent of this, but I assume the bike facilities you're looking at for Fullerton would eventually connect to that path. Is that right? Yeah, is we're actually we didn't touch on that because it's not it's in not the pick. Um, right. You know, it's not city-owned land; it's yeah. actually state-owned land. So we're working with the state to build the section of the multi-use path that adjoins our property. Right. So this would, this would ultimately connect with that. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then, is that come on up? Is that stop and go? Is that is there a signal? And no, there's not. It's just a stop sign. Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 Uh, appreciate the improvements on that S and come on up. Obviously, that gets a lot of pressure, and this will, uh, yeah, it seems like this will this should improve the circulation. Yeah, and, and this will your conversation you've talked with Don Burgess on the signal equipment relocation of the control box, our interconnect fiber optic. That's all you've got that under your belt, absolutely. Yeah. 
So at this time, Greg Rooney has approved our conceptual design report. I know there's been some back and forth. I think, Ed, you've been copied on that. Uh, we're going to continue to work closely with the BTD to make sure our design is consistent with BTD standard, make sure that that control box is in a position where uh, it makes sense, and especially thinking about the bike lane. We're thinking about all these things, and we're going to work through it with your office. I think it's going to get further Obviously, there's a fair amount of pickup drop-off that happens at the Regal Theater. I assume this is also going to create even more pickup drop-off demand, essentially along that block base. We've done the pilot one block away from you on um, uh, Boylston Street uh, for, for pickup drop-off. We should be thinking, as we learn, take lessons learned from that, how that also could be looking at the block face here on Brookline Ave. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we've done as well is a little bit uh, further down, but we've uh, been working with the ride sharing companies to change their drop off pin. So okay. we've shifted it to the front of the building and we've actually created a turnaround zone um, right. on Park right. Drive right. so that right. people don't even have to go into the garage, turn around or. Is the thought something similar here? Would, would you want the pickup drop off on Fullerton or is the, is the thought to do it on uh, off of Brookline? I think we'd like to keep sort of one pin for the property and we're probably better off if we can keep it to the front. Uh, in terms of not creating confusion and so forth. Uh, there is a weather protected connection through the building. Uh, so I, I think the thought was to keep it at the front of the building. Meaning what street? Uh, on Park Drive, we've got, we, we've got an official ride sharing lift sort of zone on our property. So when you talk, Will, that Commissioner Rooney signed off, is that on the TAPA agreement that you're talking about? No, it would be the, the conceptual design report. So our signal team, as well as our traffic team internally, uh, we submitted a, you know, a pound of paper, essentially, to, to Greg Brony, and it included site plans, signal drawings, pavement marking drawings, and he's comfortable with it at this time. We just found out that there's a, a bike lane, uh, a city project, essentially, that we need to incorporate into those drawings. So that's essentially the final piece. Uh, from there, I think we'll be able to get into the nitty-gritty signal design, some of the timing, the sequences, things of that nature. But you've, you've um, engaged Don Burgess, correct? Absolutely. We've engaged Don Burgess, and he's been he's been part of the conversation dating back to phase one of the project. So uh, okay. that redundant conduit that you had mentioned, you know, it, it extends currently to the limits of the phase one project. And as part of phase two, we would extend that along the, the sidewalk in Brookline Avenue as well. So yeah, we've coordinated that detail with Don. The construction manager plan, were we in the development of that? We are. We're actually buttoning up the drawings, and actually we expect to be uh, in to see you with our, our friends at Suffolk. Jim McCoy should be stopping by to see you over the next few weeks or so. But we can touch base on that offline. Excellent. Other questions or comments? Yes. Can you talk? We're good. Members of the public? All right. See you guys in two weeks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item is 1203-1219 uh, uh, Dorchester Ave, Hancock Street, Pleasant Street, Greenmount Street, Dorchester, widening and relocation, pedestrian easement, specific repairs, outdoor seating, uh, licenses on set up petitions by Winter Gold. Uh, Menza with Sanders and Associates <laughs> here in connection with Dot Block. Uh, so, Dot Block uh, is uh, in the Lovers Corner planning district uh, near the Savin Hill uh, T station. So, just to orient you with the site, this is uh, Dorchester Ave, uh, Hancock Street, uh, Pleasant Street, and Greenmount Street. Uh, we are uh, approved at the BPDA in April. Uh, we've been working. Uh, very collaboratively with BTD and BPDA planning staff to um, uh, ensure that the uh, uh, pick related actions, in particular transportation related actions, are consistent with the Columbus Corner planning study. Uh, projects approved for 488 units. Um, we are, the, the site itself is a really critical connection between surrounding neighborhoods, um, uh, Jones Hill, Meeting House Hill. Uh, towards Savin Hill. So one of the fundamental aspects of the plan was creating a new, it's actually a private drive, so it won't show up in the pick plans, uh, but a new, uh, really a publicly accessible uh, open space and connection 
through the neighborhood, um, planting about over 100 street trees, uh, a couple thousand square feet of new sidewalks uh, that will really uh, create uh, porosity through this block. It's currently uh, comprised of, uh, well, actually they've been demolished, but it used to be uh, industrial buildings and it was a real barrier um, uh, to uh, through traffic and connectivity. So uh, this is an aerial view, uh, again, dot ad over here in uh, uh, Pleasant Street and Greenmount. Uh, we remasked the building uh, going back to the Article 80 process. A uh, prior developer had proposed an above grade parking garage, more or less in the middle of the site. Uh, we worked to put it below grade, opened up uh, more open space. Uh, we've got over an acre of open space in the project uh, and increased setbacks and reduced heights of buildings uh, along the way. Uh, and this is a rendering from uh, Dot Ave. Uh, one of the key aspects uh, uh, on, the, on the front side of the building is really creating a great uh, frontage with cafe zone seating uh, that extends into the site and really activates that sort of public connection. Uh, so uh, we've been working hard with the, the landscape team and uh, city agencies to, uh, to design that zone um, and then just a blow up uh, of that space. We envision the private drive space as being an area that could uh, you know, accommodate farmers markets, uh, community events, block parties, that sort of thing. Uh, so really trying to make that pedestrian friendly. The circulation um, consists of uh, a one way in. Uh, from Dot Ave, and then uh, two-way uh, drives uh, on, um, coming in at um, Corner Pleasant and Hancock, out to Hancock. Uh, part of our mitigation is we're rebuilding the intersection, uh, and uh, we are um, working through the BTD review process on that. We're uh, approaching the 75% design, so that's uh, that'll be uh, in front of you probably, hoping in a few weeks. Uh, but we separated that action from the project-related actions. Uh, so that's a little overview on the project. And with that, I'll turn it over to Paula. Hi, Paula Thompson from Gales and Thomas. We're the civil engineers on the project. So for each of the streets, surrounding the site, we are proposing specific repairs. Um, this is Dorchester Avenue. And we are proposing to provide new granite curbs, concrete sidewalks. We have a three and a half foot furnishing zone. We will have permeable pavers, uh, new street trees, street lighting, and bike racks in that space. We have a minimum six foot pedestrian sidewalk, and then we will um, be coming in for cafe zones um, up against the buildings. The, originally, we, uh, you'll see on the plans that we came in for a pedestrian easement from the property line to the face of the building. We have since worked with Pick Staff, and that will be a widening and relocation plan, and it'll be a highway easement. So that in the future, when the city goes to widen Dorchester Ave, um, that'll be available. Quick question on this: whether, just to explore whether it makes sense to have a, a raised crossing here, just again to sort of signal as you enter into the development. Exactly. Yes, this one is raised. Okay. So we did um, at the Disability Commission ask the same question. Right. Um, this is a raised. It is at sidewalk three. Right. Did you say, is it signalized? Uh, these are the, um, I'm sorry, which lights are these? Not signalized. It's not. No, it's not it's signalized. Right. Oh, no, it's turned right. like it is, it, It'll it, appear like a driveway favorite instead of a street opening on Dorchester. So, again, I mean, obviously, my concern is uh, right. the pedestrian, you know, basically, you know, force, you know, path of travel brings you right out to Dorchester Avenue, not at a crosswalk. Etc. How do you channelize pedestrians to go to the uh, in the signalized intersections? So they're now walking out in the middle of Do Dorchester Ave. Um, I mean, I, I think the master plan for the other side of the street uh, contemplates blocks at uh, Auckland and Dewar Street, and uh, there was not 
I mean, there was really no mid-block crossing proposed there. We've thought, you know, over time, maybe as that side of the street develops, there ought to be a mid-block pedestrian crossing uh, that's not included in the in the plans at this point. We're really um, you know, anticipating that people are going to take the desire line to the corner and, and cross at the corner. Well, that's that's the concern. Is it basically mid-block? The desire line is coming straight out into Dorchester Avenue. Not to the desire line. It's not to the crosswalk. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's somewhat, you know, we were thinking this is sort of six of one, half a dozen the other going that way or crossing this way. The, the uses on the other side of the street are not particularly pedestrian friendly at the moment. And fast food and, and um, sort of an abandoned uh, uh, factory over here. So uh, I think, you know, we, we felt as if this would be just as appealing of a pedestrian travel uh, a path as, as crossing the street at the unsignalized intersection. And it's hard to prevent people from jaywalking if they want to do that, but. We say will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I assume that BTD and the other one has been left turns off of north, dot out northbound into the, uh, which we would not exactly, we would not want or allow, but how do we uh, similarly, does anything need to do to discourage essentially that move exactly right? Well, are you suggesting that we, uh, that, that we should put a no left turn uh, sign mid block on Dot yeah, Avenue and show that on the tablet plan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is, is the tablet sign? No, it's been So we, we have we time have, to yeah. work on that. Yeah, yeah you, you have time exactly. to work on that. We haven't gotten any comments on it, but we could put it on the sign. They're coming. I just want to. Excuse me? <laughs> They're coming. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I think Guy Dusen yeah. was here. Oh, yeah, here he is. So he will welcome them. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll flag the no left turn sign on that side of yeah. Dorchester Avenue. Thank you. Uh, to continue around the site, this is our frontage on Hancock Street. <coughs> we are again proposing a new curb line. Actually, the curb line has been moved towards the site to accommodate the future widening and restriping of Hancock Street by the city. Um, so we have new curb, we have a three and a half foot furnishing zone with new trees, street lights, um, and bike racks. And then a minimum six foot wide concrete sidewalk. And our pedestrian easement in this case will go uh, to the back of sidewalk. You'll see on the plans we were showing cafe zones, thinking those were going to be contained within the easement. We've received comments from the uh, BPDA and they've asked for the easement to just follow the back of sidewalk. So we'll and these curb lines have actually been coordinated with BTD in terms of their future plans for the Hancock Street corridor and provide uh, a widening uh, to accommodate future bus rapid transit and that sort of thing. Uh, we have a small driveway going in. It's a service driveway. There's some um, transformers and switchgear in the back here. So that crossing is, is up at sidewalk grade yep. as well as this other um, private driveway exit so that's up at sidewalk grade. Um, the last thing that you can see on this plan is a new pedestrian ramp, which will be coordinated with the um, intersection plans. That's going to be part of a separate PIC filing. And um, Disabilities Commission did ask us to show those reciprocal ramps. So the next step you'll see, you'll see those ramps. So is there a proposed any traffic control for those uh, crossings? This is, this is signalized. Green Mount and Crossing Pleasant. 
there's no pricing no pleasant. Okay. Um, there's no reciprocal ramps on okay, the other so. side. The goal is to get them to the intersection where the light's going to be. Good. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, we have Greenhound Street. Um, on this, we're using the existing light poles. We'll probably take them down during construction and reset them. We'll have new vertical granite curbing and concrete sidewalk. This sidewalk is um, eight feet wide, but it does have some um, bike racks up against the curb line and the street lights. These trees that you see on this plan are actually on private property, so they're not actually subject to the so we'll take them off the um, final set. Show them. Just yeah. show them. That's part of the hundred. I mean, I think it's useful for us to yeah. sort of emphasize about it. But where, where we're adding two trees. Uh, one comment that we got back from EPDA was that they wanted us to really take a look at Dorchester Avenue section. They asked that we take a look at locating these street trees in the future location. So we had a meeting on Tuesday with them uh, and went over an option to, instead of having the street trees at the curb line, to have them in at the final location. Um, so you can see where this has a furnishing zone and a sidewalk and a cafe. This would have a much smaller furnishing zone. It would just be for bike racks and permeable pavers. And then the, the walkway is about five, five foot nine inches. Um, and then we have the cafes, the trees, and the cafe zone beyond that. So we're still, I didn't get a res final response back from them, but we're working with them on this. We're, go, we're going uh, through the PDA accessibility parks to figure right. out what our preferred between those two, between yeah. a five foot. So we believe that the, the recessed trees will get us to where they, we want them to be in the future, so we're not ripping them out. Thanks. That makes sense. And on the final set of plans, you'll see the final cafe layout, depending on where those trees end up. Just on that, we're expecting when you look lay out the cafe, there's a level of service based on your five foot dimension of the uh, walkway with the activities that's, that's going to be generated. Any outdoor cafe requires to have a pedestrian level of service. So please right. think about that. So just to clarify, because the proponent is granting a 10 foot wide pedestrian easement, or highway easement, excuse me, along Dorchester Avenue, what we've chosen to do now is to identify in collaboration with the staff what we're calling outdoor seating areas. They're not technically cafes because we don't have operators and we don't know exactly where they're gonna be, but what all we are doing is getting conceptual agreement as to where those outdoor seating areas are gonna be in front of the two buildings that will have ground floor commercial. We will come back to the staff with exact layouts and with the pedestrian level of service analysis and such so that administratively um, you will be able to see that that these actually work as actual cafes, and of course we'll have to go to the licensing board to get approval from them as well. So this is, yeah, so the, this should show up um, primarily as like public outdoor seating until we have an operator. Um, but to Ed's okay. point, we will verify the dimensions and that it all works. We've asked them to pull back the building for our future Dorchester plans, but right now they're going to be the only recess, so they're going to occupy the setback with a cafe until such time we widen Dorchester. Thank you. This, this block, this project has a, a, a lot of frontage on Dorchester Avenue, but there is a building right at the building, building line to the north, and then there's also property to the south. So this is just a segment even of this one block for any future widening of Dorchester Avenue. But in the meantime, um, there could be interim period where there's uh, the possibility of sidewalk cafes. Sorry. Does the eastern extent of the side of the, the seating area sort of match essentially with the building face? Yes. Oh, great. Other questions or comments? Construction manager plan, where are we with that? I probably have it, right? I think yes, we've got that in. <laughs> so. We look forward to your comments. Yes. <laughs> Guy, uh, who's handling that for you? Uh, that's Robbie and Kathy. All right. Have schedule a meeting? Yep. Anything else you want to come? Okay. Members of the public? Great. Thank you. Right. See you guys in two weeks.
No, actually, um, uh, there's been a lot of discussion about how to handle the highway easement, and as a result of that, we have even more petitions. So <laughs> we're coming back to you in two weeks with more new business, uh, vertical projections and a, uh, projections and a vertical discontinuance. So our request is to postpone so that the entirety of all of these petitions will be heard on October 10th. Okay, thank you. So we're going to our next item, 105 West 1st Street, West 2nd Street, South Boston, and Earth Retention License on a petition by 105 West 1st Street, owner, LLC. Steve Morris, I'm here representing Tishman Spire, the owner of 105 West 1st Street. We're here before you to uh, present a earth retention license for West 2nd Street. So, this is previously approved design. Uh, we inherited from the other way we acquired property earlier this year. And what we're proposing is that along this West 2nd Street frontage, the exterior wall of the building is further out than the foundation wall. Really exact numbers make a 10 foot difference. And the reason that was done is just some foundational considerations in that area. So, what we're proposing is taking that foundation wall and pushing it to be flush with the exterior wall so it wouldn't affect the public realm in any way. But from the building exterior, it looks the same. We'll just have a further out foundation wall to be closer. So, good morning. My name is Lee Vansler with Haley and Aldrich, the geotechnical and environmental engineer on the project. about our uh, request for earth retention along uh, West 2nd Street. Uh, as, as Steve had mentioned, the foundation wall for the below grade space is going to extend up to property line on West 2nd Street. Uh, in order to construct that below grade space, uh, we are proposing a supportive excavation system uh, that extends out into the public way along West 2nd Street. Um, this is a similar system to what had previously been approved uh, many months ago. Uh, by the Public Improvement Commission along West 1st Street. Um, we're now expanding that approval to also capture uh, earth retention along West 2nd Street. Uh, earth retention, uh, we anticipate to consist of soldier piles and timber lagging. Uh, the soldier piles will be spaced about six to eight feet uh, on center, extending down um, into the uh, glacial suitable uh, bearing soils. Uh, due to the uh, amount of uh, the height of earth that is being retained. It'll be a braced supportive excavation system along West 2nd Street. Uh, internal bracing only, uh, consisting of steel breakers extending into our site. All components of the supportive excavation system, including the, the breakers and six feet of the soldier piles um, that extend on West 2nd Street will be cut and removed uh, following the completion of the below grade excavation. Uh, excavation uh, will extend through fill and into the, the glacial uh, bearing soils. Uh, we do not have organic soils on our site, so we don't expect that odors uh, will, will be an issue uh, during construction. Um, the supportive excavation system will des be designed to, to limit uh, deflections, uh, so we don't anticipate any, any impacts to um, utilities out on West 2nd Street. So obviously with the support of excavation being built into the public sidewalks of both first and second, I'm going to be concerned about what we're doing with pedestrians during construction. So is a construction maintenance plan going to be developed that I can look at prior to the vote? Yes, we're currently drafting that and we will get it to you once it's in Appreciate good shape. We no, are no impact on Bypass Road. You don't need to impact on Bypass Road. You will need to basically throw that by them through Mass DOT because you are up against. Right. Th this, this became before the board for a different project, and they had some very specific uh, comments on the design as it impacts their retaining wall. Yeah, yeah the, the, the project team's been certainly been thoughtful of that, and that's the reason that you'll notice that there's a notch mm -hmm. shown in the support of excavation. Uh, specifically to avoid any sort of potential interference with 
uh, with MassDOT and the uh, the West Second Street Bridge. Who are you dealing with that MassDOT? Who have you spoken to? Uh, we are uh, in the. We haven't gone to District Six yet. Okay. Got to Gotta get in there. Can you, and can you give us whatever correspondence you have? Absolutely. That'd be great. Other questions or comments? The Mayor Todd? Yeah. Members of the public? All right. Two weeks, enough time? Yeah. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next item is One Newcomb Street, Boston Proper Vertical Discontinuances on a petition by One Newcomb Street at Alton. on behalf of One Newcomb Street, with me as well as Joe DeGanges to my right. Uh, we're here this morning seeking a vertical discontinuance at One Newcomb Street. Uh, by way of brief background, this request is being made in conjunction with an approved residential development at One Newcomb Street. The project contains 23 residential units in a six-story building. The project went through the BPDA small project review process and was approved by the BPDA board as well as the Zoning Board of Appeal. As for the vertical discontinuance itself, we're seeking it for a series of bump outs or bays starting at the second floor and extending through the roof line of the building. The bump outs start at approximately 12 feet above grade and extend 50, 53 and a half feet above that start. So pretty much the second through the sixth floor of the building. The total area of discontinuance, as you can see by the plan I submitted, is 2.3 feet by 18.33 feet for a total discontinued area of 42 0.2 square feet and 2,257 cubic feet. Uh, that's essentially the presentation, so I'll pause and take any questions or comments. The entire width of the sidewalk is 4.7 feet. The area we're discontinuing is 2.3, or 4.7 inches, and we're taking out 2.3 inches. Is that right? Basically, 50% of the sidewalk will be covered by this discontinuance. Yeah, I, th I believe we have um, four points. I thought we had a full five foot yeah, sidewalk. It's a five foot sidewalk. Um, well, maybe the application it's five. It's four, it seems to be four point seven, but so it complies with our. Yeah. Okay. Right. And did we just rebuild the sidewalks here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just um, coordinate with uh, there's things that on the public works side uh, plan because of that you need obviously check in there. Mm -hmm. So has the building been built or is it in process of being constructed? The foundations uh, being built as we speak. Okay. Do you have a construction on? Plan, uh, management plan on file to be bus transportation forever? Uh, I can check with the contract. I'm pretty sure that there is. I mean, we've got. Uh, I'm not familiar with this, so I'm. Okay. But uh, should be a CMP. Obviously, is it slab on grade? No. no. So, we're in the new sidewalks and your. What's the SOE? What type of uh, support of excavation do you use? I'm sorry. What, you... what type of support of excavation for the foundation are you using? We've got uh, well, the piles were driven. And um, we're just pouring. Uh, I'm not unclear. So the question. piles, where are the piles? On your property? Yes. Or yes. Do you have to excavate any of the sidewalk? No. To get the piles in? No. Right, right up to the property line. Okay. So you have permits from us, the Transportation and Public Works Department, for the construction staging? Yeah, we have state construction. I'm sure we have the permit. I can check with can the, check the builder. Out, yep, absolutely. Again, I'm not familiar with this, so okay. a little concern. Other questions and comments about the discussion notes? And your topic? Okay. Members of the public? All right. See you guys in two weeks, and if you can just double check on pieces of the pipe. Of course. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to our next item, 195-205 Maverick Street, East Boston, specific repairs on a petition by Charter Development. from H.W. Moore, several engineers with me is Dan Chen, the project architect from BH Plus A. Uh, the first exhibit we have is the uh, existing conditions. It's a uh, one-story brick building at the address. It has parking in front. Uh, 
proposal is to uh, remove the building and redevelop the site with a, a five-story mixed-use building. So this is a, a rendering that uh, Dan's office prepared showing what the, what the uh, proposed building will look like uh, from Maverick Street. This is uh, the center area, main entrance to the building, the court area. This is looking uh, at the building from the west end of up Maverick Street, looking down Maverick Street. And then uh, from the opposite direction, looking from the east back down Maverick Street, proposed building. So in terms of uh, specific repairs, project proposes to uh, install new granite edging to close off the three existing driveways. We're proposing one 16-foot wide uh, driveway uh, to access the uh, garage and uh, 34 on-site parking spaces. We're proposing one new accessible pedestrian ramp, sort of a reconstructed ramp in approximately the same location as the uh, existing ramp uh, today. We're also proposing uh, four new street trees That sort of summarizes the gift for most of the people. How many units? Uh, it's 49 units. Uh, and is there bike parking in the building? Or bike parking in the garage, right? Yes. The bike parking is in, in the lobby as well as in the uh, garage. Yes. Because it's planned, no need to reconstruct the pad ramp on the on the Frankfurt on the opposite side. Is that right? Yeah, we coordinated that with the Disabilities right. Commission. Okay. We looked at that. There's a street uh, like control box on the opposite side that sort of prevents us from physically oh, reconstructing the ones on the opposite side. Yeah. So we 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 have adjusted the uh, proposed ramp based on the the comments that we received to the to make it as as best as we could. Got it. Yeah. Maybe just on, on, on your building side rather than on the Franklin Street side. Yes. Other questions or comments? Members of the public. Well Members of the public. Right. See you guys in two weeks. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is uh, Beacon Street, Berkeley Street, Dartmouth Street, Marlborough Street, Boston proper. Specific affairs on a petition by the City of Boston Commission. Good morning again. My name is John Monticelli, representing the Boston Transportation Department. And I'm here with our consultant, Jesse Budart from Tool Design Group. Um, hey, just just a, a very brief piece of context. Uh, these two intersections were part of our uh, a larger corridor improvement plan for Beacon Street through the Back Bay. Um, and additional traffic calming, bike facilities, et cetera, um, improving signals to uh, changing signals to improve the pedestrian uh, experience and operability. Um, these two specific intersections, we ran into some issues in making those signal changes to improve the pedestrian experience. Um, and so we began uh, our coordination with Public Works, uh, with the BTD Signals Group, and other city agencies as well, um, to develop a plan to separate the ramps uh, at all four corners of both intersections, uh, as well as to integrate the necessary signal equipment that we would require. So yeah, I'll go over um, what we're doing here exactly. So just at the first uh, overview, we're repairing all four corners of the intersection, um, making uh, ADA compliant programs all the way across um, each corner. Um, also installing your traffic signal pedestals so they won't obstruct any views or anything. Um, then also a trenching, or sorry, making the curb ramps and the, the curb radii a little tighter, um, but still allowing all vehicles, all emergency vehicles, all trucks to be able to make those turns. Um, in addition, ADA compliant um, accessible push buttons um, on all four corners, and um, especially on the northwest corner and the northeast corner. Um, and actually moving across to the southwest and um, southeast corners 
uh, curve extensions on some approaches, and that's mainly because, uh, especially in the northbound approach, we wanted to do another curve extension across, but there was a desire to potentially, or currently if there's a, another travel lane that's making the left turns, so we want to maintain that. Um, but the really nice thing about doing the, the curve ramps is you have more space to dwell there as a pedestrian um, and to wait, and then also um, gets you closer to make the, the crossing the faster amount of time. Um, I think, and, oh, and a really important thing too is we're really sensitive to drainage, and so we don't want to impact that as much as possible to escalate costs. So in all corners, all of the drainage structures are maintained, which also accounts for why the, the curb extensions look a little funky. They're, they're uh, a little tighter than normal, but we have been working with Public Works for the last year or so on, um, on these dimensions of the, the radii of those curves and the curb extensions themselves. And they're on board, and they've been, we've been working together very closely on that. Um, and then we are installing one new catch basin on the southwest corner um, because we see that there will be pooling issues if we do not. Um, and we've been working with uh, Boston Water Sewer and Public Works on that and coordinating all those efforts together. Um, let's see. And then, oh, and one last thing is we're also coordinating with the utility companies, Eversource, because uh, they have some big vaults here, <laughs> which we want to make sure that we don't disrupt. Uh, but we're also working with them to lower one of their vaults because it's in one of the key positions uh, that we need to lower the sidewalk a little bit to make sure that we meet our grades for ADA um, compliance with those ramps. Um, so this, I think this is everything that I have for Beacon and Berkeley. John, do you know what we're doing when we start with the Beacon Street? Um, I believe the schedule is for this fall, early this winter, so within the month and a half or so. Fair enough. So are we, is, is the thought to line this up with that? It, it was the intent a year ago, um, but some of the unique uh, historic and, and other geological issues that we've run into. Um, so we're hoping to have it coordinated, but if it doesn't, uh, we will work, do our best with Vision Zero, Contractors, Public Works. Okay. Uh, as long as we can have the Canadian Center on yeah. So just on this, John, I just had a recent conversation with Don Burgess on this. Yep. There's some specific comments that he needs addressed that uh, fire signalization, et cetera. So you need to get in touch with Don. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah, so we actually, I just resubmitted plans to that, and Alfredo approved the plans from that from his perspective. I'll triple check. There's, just outside of that, there's some specific concern. John, will <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll Martha and Marmar. And I just had um, another, we had a couple other comments. Um, so a lot of the existing catch basins, if you look at the handicap ramp, they look like they're close to the beginning of the taper or the middle of the taper. Uh, we just want to make sure that we can fit gutter mounts on all the um, on all the catch basins. So, you you know, if you can't fit them, you'll have to just move the catch basins. Okay. Denise, just one spe uh, specific, are you uh, looking perhaps at R4, the ramp? Yeah, if you look at, okay. uh, so if you look at Marlboro Street, Dartmouth Street, yep. um, the ones that we're mostly concerned with are the ones um, on the south side. Okay. And then if you look at um, Beacon Street and Berkeley Street. Um, that northeast. The ones, yeah, the, yeah, the northeast one. Yep. And then the other ones look like they're okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah actually, if you look at the, uh, the northeast one and the northwest one. Okay, yeah, we'll make sure that those are out of the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so at Dartmouth and Marlboro, uh, same deal. We're um, changing all of the, we're curbing ramps because currently there are not accessible curb ramps at all for locations. So we're making them real now. And in addition to that, removing the old ones, uh, which uh, uh, well, is necessary just to put in the new ones. Um, and then, as well, accessible equipment, push buttons, pedestals, um, flat ramps at all four locations. Also, with heavy consideration of the historic uh, district and all, all of the brick that's installed there, we've been coordinating to redo that brick as much as possible, um, especially in the, the northeast and uh, uh, southeast locations, where there's not enough space behind it to 
to put concrete, and so there's been a request to um, make that all brick. So we'll have special considerations that that is a flat 90, especially on those eastern corners. And we've been working with Public Works, and that's some feedback that they provided us for how we should reconstruct this. Um, and then anything else special here? I mean, much uh, thank you for the comments on the, the cash basins. We'll make sure that those are um, at appropriate locations. The gutter mouse are there. Thank you. Um, My question on this on the southwest ramp on the one that is crossing Dartmouth Street. Yes. It's, it's fairly far south from the sort of path of travel down uh, Marlboro. Yeah, there's a there's an electricity that's the, every source of fault there. Is that wall beneath that's preventing us from going down? Yeah. Otherwise, I agree with you. <laughs> I would love to move that vault or whatever, but I think it's much more difficult for them to move the vaults rather than just lower or raise them, which is what we're doing at the other location, we're just lower and raising it. I, mean, I think similar to uh, your dot block comments, I think there's, there's, there's sort of a general question about how we ensure that we are guiding people to a ramp, particularly if it's offset from the flow of travel. Right. Uh, anyway. I'm not, I don't think there's an SS solution here, but. I think one good thing here actually is we're, um, we're decreasing the radius of the curved ramps in general. Yep. So everything's going to be a little tighter, tighter. to the intersection. Yep. So um, it'll be, it'll be a little closer to the path of travel than that. Yeah. If that resource is coming to do low work, we want them to put their new accessible covers, not just come and lower mm -hmm. something that is. Okay. Um, they've got a much nicer version these days that okay. show up. We'll let them know they We've had that conversation with every source about replacing. Yes, we've been coordinating them for a That's year right. now. It generally takes forever. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I've been telling you right now. Yeah. Uh, it's my thing, but on the north uh, west corner. Look, yeah. So it looks like the handhold for the BTD equipment is essentially in the middle of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a, it's also a line with another. Existing piece of hand, hand hole that's to the west of it. Okay. That's an existing one. Right. Um, if there's a way to take handles and deadholes from out of the path of travel exactly the direction, yeah. that would be ideal. But if uh, yeah. I appreciate that it's already lined up with something else. But yeah, uh, I think we can move that immediately. If it's yeah. for your judgment, if you think it makes sense, rather have that out of the flow. Agreed. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Members of the public. All right, see you in two weeks. Thank you. All right. Our uh, next item of new business is Chelsea Street, East Boston, specific repairs on a petition by the Masters Department of Transportation. That's still morning. Three minutes. Good morning. Uh, commissioners, thank you very much on behalf of the secretary and myself who has been managing this project for the last nine months. I want to thank you for accommodating us. Um, we're a little bit under a tight schedule, which we'll explain in a minute. Um, since uh, the city of Boston last had ownership of the Chelsea Street Bridge, there have been a few things that have happened. It was reconstructed and opened in 2012. And as you're aware, it went from a vascular to a vertical lift. Uh, the span is longer, and the lift goes to 170 uh, feet. Uh, this was to, done to address the myriad of um, safety issues and incidents that were occurring on the creek. And I am happy to report that since that bridge has been opened, there have been no maritime incidents on the bridge. An unfortunate consequence of that bridge is that it has had grave impact on traffic in both for East Boston and for Chelsea. Uh, so what we've been working on over the past nine months is looking at ways to improve the operations of the bridge as well as to put in more um, infrastructure to give the residents and the workers and the visitors traversing the bridge better information on when it's going to lift and how long it's going to take. The bridge is not automated. Everything is done by hand. There are handwritten logs and there are phone calls. So it makes it very difficult to notify the public on when it's going to lift. And sometimes people, and actually more often than we would like, are waiting up to two hours to get across the bridge. We were fortunate enough to find uh, and, and um, make progress with federal highways to receive a grant to do the improvements. And the improvements actually impact the bridge itself but also benefit East Boston. And what we're here to do today is to run, walk you through some of the improvements we're proposing. The federal grant application deadline is next week. So again, I appreciate your support of us and help. I have with me Melissa and uh, Chris from AECOM, and they'll walk you through the technical components of the bridge. 
Sure. So the major portions we're here to talk about today are two variable message signs that we're proposing on Chelsea Street in East Boston. Uh, we found from, through various stakeholder outreach that the, the existing warning signs are the most helpful thing that's been done for travelers for the bridge. And they essentially say Chelsea Street Bridge, and then it's a blank out sign that says closed or it's blank ahead. So we're expanding on that and adding a countdown element so that travelers know uh, how long to expect the lift duration to be. And we hear that will be helpful for their travel decisions, whether they decide to divert the bridge or to wait out the lift period. Um, as you can see uh, from the plans, we designed these signs to try and uh, minimize impacts on the sidewalks uh, for the utility trenching, because these will be utility powered. Uh, this first plan here on Chelsea Street, uh, you can see we're proposing right near an existing uh, utility line. This is a uh, roadside mounted sign. Uh, it's four feet wide and there's um, plenty of pedestrian clearance here from the edge of the pole to the back of the curb. It's a 10 foot sidewalk. Um, the second sign we're proposing an overhead sign structure with a larger variable message sign. And the purpose for this is so that the, the traffic that is queuing uh, at the bridge can see the sign for a larger distance. Um, we, when we met with BTD and Don Burgess and BPDA, uh, there were some initial concerns because overhead sign structures aren't typically proposed in arterials. But we think it's warranted here because of the backdrop of the bridge uh, behind it's an industrial area and the importance of getting that message across and having a full span structure so that the foundations don't impact that sidewalk with, you know, we're leaving over uh, four feet clearance on either side. And the important thing for the grant is that, uh, like Andrea said, we're under a bit of a tight timeline, but to, for estimating purposes and funding purposes, uh, this design can always be scaled back um, if needed. So that's something we'd be looking for uh, feedback from you and the other stakeholders on. And just for the record, um, some of the concerns that were expressed to us that the East Boston community might not want their sight lines obstructed by a sign. So we get that, um, but if we put in less, we can't go for more later. Take questions at this time. Okay, I have a question, uh, a question on that um, sheet you have there. Is there any underground conduit you're proposing to put in on that sheet? I'm um, just a very minimal conduit run from an existing uh, utility cabinet, maybe okay. about five feet. So, oh, there okay. would, so there would be sidewalk um, replacement there. So is it on the um, the east side or the west side that you? It's on the west side. On the west side. Okay. Um, and then we did get your plans. I'm still reviewing them. Um, I'm going to plan to get back to you early next week. I know you're inside time crunch, Joe. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, in all cases, there's no residential fires. It's all industrial in both locations. And then uh, for the overhead side, 17 feet of clearance with the minimum. Right? Mm -hmm. And it seems like even with that, it only covers one travel lane. It only will cover one travel lane. Because like, we would have an opportunity if we were ever something which was walking tall with 17 feet. Right. It will That's not get a good point because there's, like there's oversized loads. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll need to work with this sign dimensions and configurations with you going forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Because for whatever oversized loads are, you need to come into access near or otherwise. Right. I, I think this is great. Obviously, this, it helps the community, helps the emergency response and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Being an emergency evacuation route, we're particularly sensitive yes. to it as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Andrea Todd? We're good. That was the part. Thank you very much right. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and to clear our first new business item, because they are not, they are not here. Okay. Not here. All right. 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 All